I get a lot of questions about the Canadian Electrical Code 2024 version, the new version that uh, has rule uh, section 8, rule 102, voltage drop with some new math. And there's a lot of um, anxiety over that math and how to do it. But if you organize your math really nicely, like I am going to show you how to do in this video, then the D3 math or the math that is in table D3 of 8102, your voltage drop calculations that are new for 2024 are actually not that hard at all. So in order to do the voltage drop calculations, the new method, you have to use table D3 in appendix D. And that's how you calculate voltage drop. Now, let's organize it a little bit nicely, though, like regular math. So here I have made you a formula similar to the one that you'll see in the book there, but sort of all in, in one place here. So this is all you have to do is use this formula like a regular math formula. And when you have to calculate that voltage drop, we have to remember that the voltage drop is a ratio of the source voltage and the percentage that it has dropped. So I'm just expressing that in a ratio here that the amount of volts in volts that it drops over the amount of voltage that was provided is equal to the percentage of drop, let's say it's a 3% voltage drop or a maximum 3% voltage drop is what you're working with. That'll go on the top here and percent means 100. So with this calculation, with calculation one and calculation two, we can calculate anything we need to do that relates to voltage drop, the um, maximum length that you can uh, run a circuit the um, uh, for a certain um load current, uh, let's say we have the length and we need to calculate what is going to be the drop over that length, et cetera. So it's just, it's it's basically just equation one. And then we have to remember how to calculate voltage drop itself, which I've given you in a ratio in equation two. So equation one then has these variables. So voltage source, the source voltage is the uh, connected load voltage at the source. So that's what is given. And we, if there is zero voltage drop, then there will be 100% of the source, source voltage will go, you know, let's say to the lights in the distance, it'll get all that way. Um, if there were 100% voltage drop, then that would go down to, to then voltage, then the, you would get none of the source voltage there. So source voltage should be pretty um, self-explanatory. Voltage drop is the amount that dropped. It's a difference between uh, from the source to the load. It's the amount that dropped. Uh, though, so the, um, and it's, it's not the new voltage, it's the amount that it actually dropped. So voltage, uh, the new voltage plus voltage drop would equal voltage source. And then there's this K value and that's okay. K value is just the thing from the table. That's D3 is the K value. And then there's a bunch of notes on the on the K value table, and um, and then uh, note two is one of those notes. It's a voltage drop factor. And then there's uh, there's a couple more notes actually that I'm I'm going to um, show you down here, and that's from note three and note four, and the the load current. That's the the current that we're trying to provide. Uh, for our load. And then this is the length of the circuit. So no problem. Things get just a little bit fuzzy in here with a K value and a factor. And um, and there's a couple more um, possible factors down here. Possible factors down here. All right. And what we do then is we will know, we will know some of these and then we solve for the unknown. So let's say we know all of this and how, how long can that circuit actually be? Um, or let's say we know the length and we know all of this and it'll say, how much is that voltage gonna drop? So we're simply just using an equation and we're solving for the unknowns, just like any other math. And it's, it's, quite, um, it's quite easy to do. Now, let's talk about a little bit more of the details and all you have, for math D3, it's all right on this screen.
screen. So you can take a screen capture of this and it is all right here. You can contact me below and I can get it for you as well. I can send this to you. So this is, um, that that's what the, the variables are. And so the let me just summarize down here. We, we simply solve for the unknown variable in the equation. Usually we're solving for voltage drop, we're solving for the maximum K value, or we're solving for length. If you want some example problems, I can do a million example problems of this. Just let me know below and I'll do that for you. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about those variables because they get a little bit uh, more details, a couple more factors in there. So uh, the voltage drop, voltage drop comes from this ratio, okay, this ratio. That's where voltage drop comes from. Easy peasy. Um, K comes from da table D3. In order to know K, we need to know the material, the size, the installation, and the power factor. Let me scroll down to table K and show you what I mean. We had to know, we had to know the size. We have to know the material, copper or aluminum. We know, need to know the installation. And we need to know the power factor. There we go. That's all it is for um, table D3. Now, we have to also notice that table D3, table D3 is for, it gives you the K value for 75 degrees. So that's why we have a couple other factors that just have to do with temperature. So here we go. I said the K value comes right? Uh, hang on a second. The, the K value comes from table D3 that I just showed you and we circled material, size, insulation, power factor. And we go into that table and we, all we do is get the value. We get the K value. Um, but so if the operating temperature is 75 degrees, then we're good. We use it just as it is from the table. We use it just as it is from the table, if it is 75 degrees. All right, so I said that right here. Take it from the table. But if the operating temperature is lower than that, then we can make the K value a little bit, little bit higher. So we multiply by um, 0.95, that's shown in note three. If the operating temperature is higher than that, you're going to multiply by this factor 1.05. So if the uh, we're, voltage drop came from a ratio, K came from an easy table. If the temperature is 75 degrees, we keep it as it was from the table. If we're at six operating temperature, 60 degrees, multiply by 0.5. If it's 90 degrees, multiply by 1.05. And if it is extra low voltage, defined by the voltage source being less than two thirds of table two sixty degree Celsius ampacity, then you multiply by 0.86. And that is in note four. Uh, so let me summarize this again. Let me delete all of this. And I'm gonna mention it again, right from the top, okay? from from the top, what I have said so far is the new procedure for doing the voltage drop calculations in the 2024 electrical code simply means that you have a formula and you have to sub in the voltage source, the voltage drop, K value, um, and a factor that is called a factor from note two, and then uh, the load current and the length. You solve for whichever variable you don't know. When you're calculating voltage source and voltage drop, here's a handy ratio for you, which you probably already are comfortable with. In order to get the K value, it is in table D3. Use it by itself if the temperature is 75 degrees. Multiply by 0.95 if the temperature is 60 degrees. Multiply it by 0.9 if or sorry, by 1.05 if it's 90 degrees. If it's, this is an extra low voltage case where the source voltage is less than two thirds of the ampacity, then multiply it by 
That's what note three and note four say. Now moving on, the other variable is F. And the variable F comes from note two. Um, uh, in 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 table below table D three. So the factor F is has its own table inside a note. And here it is. There we go. Note two is the voltage drop factor F. So it's it's going to be either two or 1.73. Okay. And that's it. And we typically know the current, we typically know the, the length and and we're or we're solving for them. Let me say this one more time. Let's do it just with this equation on the top of our heads. All right, let's do it just with the equation on the top of our heads and explain this one more time. And then you're gonna comment below if you would like me to do a bunch of example problems for this in another video. In order to solve voltage drop problems for the Canadian Electrical Code Section 8, 8-102 voltage drop rule, you simply use this equation. 1000 times a voltage drop equals factor K times factor F times current times length. We typically know the length in meters. We typically know our load current in amps. F is a factor that comes from a table. And that table looks like this. F is either going to be 2 or 1.73, depending on the type of system you are calculating. K is a factor that comes from a table. The table looks like this. The table is set at 75 degrees, so you can use these values if you're at 75 degrees. If you're not at 75 degrees, then you are going to use either, um, you're gonna multiply that K value by 0.95 or 1.05 or 0.86. So you have a factor for your K value factor, which might be why lots of people have problems with this, but it's not so bad. We can deal with that K value. And uh, the last thing to talk about here is voltage drop. And we calculate that voltage drop by the ratio of just knowing that a voltage drop is uh, the percentage of voltage that is going to decrease between the source voltage and um, and the load voltage. And that's it. We plug and play in here. If you work out the units, you'll see that we need a 1000 there. You should solve this with units because that's what checks your answer. This calculation for voltage drop, the D3 math I like to call it of 8102, is not difficult at all. You're just finding factors and you're subbing into this equation. I hope that's helpful for you. Let me know if you want some example problems. The example problems bring a lot of clarity and they're not so hard at all.